Hey team, and welcome back to another episode of our Astrological Magical Elections video series. Today we're going to talk about the magical elections that are going to be available to us between the Scorpio full moon on April 26th and the Taurus new moon on May. So this is actually kind of an interesting couple of weeks. Not only uh, is it the waning moon, which tends to have a little bit, tends to be a little bit slower in regards to astrological elections, there tends to be a little bit less to choose from when we're dealing with waning moons, um, but uh, we actually do have a few elections to talk about for each location, and there is actually a significant amount of overlap between the three, and that's a little bit unusual. Um, but most of our, our three locations are going to have kind of the same elections to choose from, which is kind of fun. Um, so on the one hand, kind of everybody in the world gets more or less the same elections to choose from, um, but I have to repeat myself a lot, so that might be kind of annoying. So our first electional opportunity is actually going to be, we're going to focus on the Western European continent, and here our first electional opportunity is going to be from May 1st at around 4.30 in the morning. This chart is set for around 4.23. And here we're going to have an opportunity for a 22nd Lunar Mansion Talisman. The 22nd Lunar Mansion is, I think, a really fun one and a really good one to have. Um, and it's especially, it's there are, there are only very few, I think, Lunar Mansions that are... Um, kind of specifically constructed in a way to be constructive or to be helpful during the waning moon phase. And the 22nd Lunar Mansion is one that I think hits that mark. The 22nd Lunar Mansion is one that is primarily about escape. Um, and of course, there are a lot of different situations where escape might be something that you, you, know, you need to escape from. It may be a situation of like literal imprisonment, or it may be something that is not a as super literal, but still very real, such as like being trapped somewhere either due to like financial constraints or lack of physical mobility, or you know, some sort of an abusive situation that you're looking to get out of. All are perfectly, uh, are all are perfectly valid reasons to seek the 22nd Lunar Mansion's help and situations that the 22nd Lunar Mansion can actually, you know, help you with. The 22nd, it can also be used for, like, healing from disease, you know, escape from disease, that kind of a thing. Um, there is kind of like a medicinal or medical um, aspect of it as well to consider also uh, the 22nd as a healing modality. But going ahead and taking a look at our election, since it's worth discussing, we have the moon placed here in the 22nd Lunar Mansion conjoined the Midheaven, um, and at this time she is applying a trine to the sun. The trines to the sun, you guys know by now, are my favorite aspect connections, uh, and so especially when we're <coughs> using, or when we're working with a, a, a talismanic spirit that is about things like freedom or escape, or health or things like that, then the sun is a really great planet to go to anytime that you can. Um, the ruler of the first house in this chart is Mars, because Aries rises. Mars is here in Cancer um, in the fourth house. Mars is not afflicted by Saturn. Um, Mars is not combusted. The moon is not combusted or afflicted by Saturn. But we do have um, this moon-Mars opposition that has... It's very recently separated about two degrees in this chart. And I think it's worth talking about because, you know, a lot of times if there are moon-Mars oppositions, I don't, you know, I don't share those charts. Uh, we, we skip those days if there are moon-Mars oppositions. And even though it's separating, I do think two degrees is a little close. But this is kind of one of those techniques that you can do to mitigate these kinds of things um, in that if the moon is afflicted by a planet, then you can make it fine or make it better. You can make it not an affliction any longer. Uh, by making the planet that is afflicting the moon the ruler of the first house, which is what, you've, what we have done here. In that case, that planet sort of takes over um, signification or symbolizes the person for whom the talisman is for. It's not some outside force that more directly interferes with what the talisman is trying to do, like it would be if the Mars was not the ruler of the first house. So remember that technique and use it next time you're constructing your own talismanic collections. So the next election opportunity we have to talk about for the Western European continent is just a few hours later, well, I guess several hours later, for May the 2nd at around 1.23 in the morning. And this is going to be an opportunity for a 23rd Lunar Mansion talisman. Um, the 23rd Lunar Mansion is another one that I think works pretty well uh, for the waning phase being used constructively. It's a little bit more uh, obviously malefic, I think. Um, not quite as obviously good-natured as the 22nd Lunar Mansion is. Uh, the 23rd is much more obviously malefic, but one that is a little bit more easily tamed uh, to kind of force it to be more, more positive. And the 23rd Lunar Mansion is primarily about swallowing or devouring or destroying. So obviously uh, we want to kind of point that in a positive direction. The 23rd Lunar Mansion is something like the bottomless pit or like a vacuum cleaner, I guess in that it's very good at just kind of sucking up and taking out things 
Um, so ideally, we want this pointed towards negative things that we want to have removed from you know our life circumstance, whether that is bad habits or you know maybe even people, bad relationships, things like that. Any sort of thing that you want, or like you know, even, it can be even like less physical things like you know anxiety or fear, anything like that. Anything you want kind of removed from the situation. Um, the twenty third lunar mansion can really help with that, especially during waning moon phases. The twenty third also has something of a healing modality. Um, somewhat like the 18th Lunar Mansion, where the 23rd is more concerned with devouring an illness um, to you know, get rid of it and remove it from a system. So the 23rd Lunar Mansion is useful to use if you are already sick, um, and if you, it's not so. It's not something to use if you're looking for something that is more preventative um, or is more kind of like holistically focused on improving one's well-being. 23rd Mansion isn't about that. That when you want to go for like the 10th or somebody else. Uh, or the 22nd, I think, could be good. Well, no, the 22nd you would want is more about escape from illness, so it's probably not a good preventive talisman. Um, but going ahead and taking a look at our election for this, we've got the moon placed here in the 23rd lunar mansion on the ascendant. Excellent. Um, at this time, she is applying a trine to Venus, who is a benefic planet, who is dignified in Taurus. Um, and benefic planets are, you know, just, this is like a combo breaker, I think, for the past while. Um, you know, for this video and the previous one, it was just a bunch of like connections with the sun, uh, and so now we kind of have like a Venus connection. Like, whoa, what's that mean? Um, and so, while I really do prefer the sun for talismans or things like that that involve um, like health and well-being and strengthening things like that, um, any benefic planet can really do the job. It's just the sun is a little bit more naturally aligned for it. But diving a little bit more into Venus and her role in these kinds of things, um, it's important to remember that whenever we're dealing with um, talismans for these more malefic-oriented spirits and we're trying to kind of apply them to be more uh, more benefic and more helpful, that we are sort of uh, not playing the game in, in the, with the right rules when we do these things. Because what we would typically want is we would want a planet who is capable of doing the job. So when we're dealing with something that's about removing or devouring or, you know, dismissing something, getting rid of something, deleting something, um, then this is one of those situations where more positive aspects with the malefic planets, Mars and Saturn, would be more, more right. Like that would be more along the lines of what we would typically want. But malefic planets, while they don't do as good of a job as stopping the situation and you know ending it and you know cutting it off and things like that like venus is not all about like cutting and severing ties and things like that that mars would be right she doesn't do that job the same way she more wants to bring things together so if you are in a situation where you want that thing gone like no questions asked and you just want it cold turkey kind of a situation then this uh, talismanic collection for the 23rd lunar mansion might not be quite right for you because it operates in a very different way than if it were a malefic that we were accentuating here because that malefic is going to be stronger in kind of setting that boundary and keeping that thing whatever that is apart but the trade-off is that it may be harsher it may be more difficult it may be like a situation that you cannot undo or it may ruin you know whatever the thing is kind of like burning a bridge kind of a situation whereas a more benefic planet in this situation it may take more effort we'll say to finally clear the barrier um, but that whole situation is usually handled a lot more easier uh, than it would be if a malefic planet were involved so malefics are more useful for getting the situation done um, kind of more heavy-handed which may result in bad feelings um, and hurt feelings but benefic planets are more like let you down gently, which is just kind of like up to you to decide how you want to go about it. So our next electional opportunity for the Western European continent is going to be on May 7th at around 5.45 in the morning. So just kind of a little bit after sunrise. And this is going to be an opportunity for actually a Venus planetary talisman. Uh, so I didn't think that we would have any of these, honestly, just because, uh, unfortunately, as for basically the entire time that Venus has been in Taurus, we've had to deal with her being very close to the sun and combust for a long time. And then kind of like on the wrong side of this, blah, 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 it's just like a whole bunch of stuff went wrong. Um, but now that Venus is moving you know, far enough to the end of the sign of Taurus, we can start to see some things pop up. And it looks like we are going to have a pretty good electional opportunity for uh, Venus and Taurus, at least for Western Europe here, um, on this morning. So what we're going to have is we're going to have Venus in her sign of domicile in Taurus conjoined the Ascendant. It's Friday morning, Friday sunrise, so it's Venus's day and Venus's hour. And we're going to have the Moon in Pisces applying a very close um, sextile to um, Venus 
in Taurus here. So we, you know, we've hit all of our, we've checked all of our boxes for things that we would typically look for in planetary talismans. So everything here is really good. Um, and this is probably going to be really the only opportunity for a Venus in Taurus talisman, because by the time the moon kind of comes back around to conjoin Venus, she'll have already slipped out into Gemini, which is that you can't have a Venus in Taurus talisman if Venus is not in Taurus. Like, what a surprise. So this is going to be kind of one of those, um, the best that we're going to get, uh, essentially, for Venus in Taurus at this time. And kind of the only downside, I think, of this is um, waning moon. That kind of sucks. Um, Ma, or Saturn here is pretty angular, which is kind of not, not ideal. Um, but other than that, everything is kind of okay. I think the moon, let me see how fast the moon is moving. Wrong. <laughs> Oh, the moon's pretty slow, um, so that is also not ideal. But you know, you do what you got to do. Um, you you work with what you got, basically. Um, but otherwise, you know, Venus isn't afflicted by Mars or Saturn. She's far enough away and separating from that square to not really worry about it. Um, she's not square Mars. She's not conjoined Mars. She's far enough away from the sun to no longer be combust. So all in all, a pretty good um, a pretty good opportunity to pick up a Venus in Taurus talisman or a Venus talisman in general if you've been hunting for one for a while. Because I think for a while we've kind of had bad luck with Venus talismans. I don't remember if we had an opportunity for it when she was in Pisces or not, but I don't remember... So maybe not. Um, but so if you're somebody who has, you know, been wanting to kind of explore that relationship with Venus um, in your natal chart or kind of work to repair it if you've been working on a remedial practice for a while and kind of want to take a step up um, with that, uh, then definitely this can be an opportunity to make that uh, to make that happen. All right. And our final electional opportunity for the Western European continent is going to be for May 9th at around 415 in the morning. And this is going to be an opportunity for a second lunar mansion talisman. So the second lunar mansion um, is one that when we're working with it through a waning phase, we're primarily working with it for like the removal of anger. Um, and this can be really helpful, of course, for individuals who, you know, suffer from anger issues, um, from managing their anger, from controlling it, from expressing it create or constructively, I almost said creatively. That would be different. Um, and it can also be really helpful to help to kind of build bridges back in relationships that have maybe strained, or maybe there's been a fight to help kind of understand where you're coming from, where different people are coming from, and help to foster forgiveness. Um, and forgiveness is something that I think, you know, that I personally think is very important for a lot of different reasons. It's important to be forgiving and to let go of things or else you have, you know, issues where um, things just aren't dealt with properly. And, and, you know, not to say that you should immediately forgive people or things, things take time. Um, but if you're in a situation where you feel like it's been enough time, but just something about a situation continues to make you, continues to make you angry, continues to, to trouble you, to upset you in a way that you feel like it's no longer healthy or constructive and it's time to kind of start to move past that and, you know, it, process forgiveness, whether, you know, forgiving yourself for something that you've done or forgiving somebody else for something they've done to no longer kind of let them have that power over you, then this could be a really great talisman to have on, to have on board as well, you know, as well as working with general kind of grief counseling strategies. So taking a look at our election for this uh, talisman, we have the moon placed here in the uh, second lunar mansion, conjoined the ascendant, and at this time she is applying the sextile to Jupiter. Jupiter, who I think is a really great planet to go to for these kinds of things, and Jupiter is the antithesis of Mars in a lot of ways in these kinds of contexts. Mars is about anger, rage, and cruelty, and Jupiter is more about, you know, forgiveness and mercy, which is exactly the kind of sentiments and emotions that we want to lean into for a talisman like this. So leaving behind Western Europe, we're now going to move into the North American uh, electional opportunities, and this is going to be kind of where I start to repeat myself a lot, since the electional opportunities are pretty much the same um, between all three locations. But our first electional opportunity for the North American continent is going to be for May 1st at around 4.30 in the morning, and this is going to be that opportunity for the 22nd Lunar Mansion, um, just now North American version. Uh, just kind of like the exact same thing going on here. We've got the moon in the 10th house conjoin the midheaven and she's applying that trine to the sun i really enjoy these trines to the sun whenever we can get them especially in a mansion uh, like the 22nd which is more of course about freedom escape and healing so if you're in a situation where you feel like you need to escape or break free from something whether that is like a little literal imprisonment of you know yourself or somebody that you love whether uh it is being trapped in some situation that you do not want to be stuck in any longer, whether it's due to issues of mobility, um, and those can be physical and uh, literal, or they can be more mental and metaphorical, such as in cases of like abusive individuals being stuck in abusive households, 
or being somebody who feels you know very trapped in a job with no way you know really out no like realistic way out um, then the 22nd Lunar Mansion can be very helpful in finding you the path forward from those places to places of safety and security. There is also a health component involved in this where the 22nd Lunar Mansion is used for healing, primarily, you know, like kind of applying that same thing, the escape from illness. So very useful if you or somebody that you know is currently sick and dealing with some sort of condition, whether that is an acute or a chronic condition. Um, or, but it's not very useful for people who just want it for more preventative. It's not very, not v super great for that. It's really more about escaping from an illness that one is currently experiencing. Going back to our chart here, um, we have Mars as the ruler of the first house. Mars is here in Cancer. Um, and we do have this Mars, this moon Mars opposition in the North American version of the chart. It is further away. Um, than it is in the in the Western European version. So I think there's a little bit less of a concern here because it's about six degrees past, whereas in the Western European version it was like two degrees past, so like much more immediate, much more worrisome uh, potentially. But we fix that, of course, by making Mars the ruler of the first house and giving Mars a little bit more authority uh, and a bit more purpose, we'll say, in the chart as representing the person for whom the talisman is for rather than it just being some sort of like random other outside force that can more directly interfere uh, with the talisman, we don't really run that risk here. And you know, remember to remember this tip, remember this this technique. If you are constructing your own talismanic collections and are having to do so sort of around uh, a, an afflicted moon, take the planet that is afflicting the moon and make it the ruler of the first house. Alternatively, you can make the moon Caden not involved and have a benefic planet in the first house. So that might be an option as well. Our next election for North America is going to be on May 3rd at, at 1 o'clock in the morning is kind of when we're going to have our opening for this. Um, and this is going to be an opportunity for a Saturn planetary talisman. So another um, opportunity has presented itself to us before Saturn uh, goes retrograde and we kind of miss out on a long stretch of time for Saturn and talismans. So this is going to be one that is kind of quick in its window. So worth considering that as part of the uh, part of the factor of whether or not you choose to pursue this election or not. Uh, I guess I started this one at around one o'clock in the morning, but I guess you could, I guess you could start it when Aquarius starts rising, uh, whenever that is for you, um, because then you'll still be within the Saturn hour. And that's kind of what we're juggling here is at what point the moon and Saturn are more angular. Um, and then until the Saturn hour ends, we move into the Jupiter hour. So taking a look at our election here, we can see the moon and Saturn conjunction happening here on the ascendant with Saturn and Aquarius. Um, Saturn's unafflicted by Mars, not combust the sun, anything like that, neither is the moon. And the moon is applying this conjunction with Saturn. Um, and it is Saturn's hour at this time, but Saturn's hour ends um, very shortly after. Like at this location specifically, it ends about 15 minutes later. So that's that's a uh, an okay amount of time, but it's not really all that great, you know? Um, like 15 minutes is is decently long for like an election, we'll say, where sometimes we're used to them only being open for like, you know, a handful of minutes. But for more planetary talismans, they, people usually like to do more, like they like to be more involved in. Uh, and for this, we like to see windows of like of more of, of more like, you know, half an hour ish. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. This window is a little bit abbreviated because once we move into the Jupiter hour, then we're not going to be able to really access um, the Saturn spirits really in the same way that we would um, otherwise. And it's unfortunately a Sunday, so we don't like we can't fall back on the planetary on the planetary day to really help us here. But if you're somebody who's been thinking about uh, a Saturn and Aquarius talisman for a while and you weren't so keen on the previous one, uh, which did have like an issue of the moon recently separating from a square with Mars, then this might be another good alternative for you since we no longer have that Mars interference to deal with. So our third and final electional opportunity for the North American continent is going to be for May 9th at around 4.15 in the morning. And this is going to be an opportunity for that second lunar mansion talisman. The second lunar mansion, when we're working with it from a waning moon phase, is primarily about the removal and supplication of anger. So very useful for situations wherein you're hoping to kind of repair a relationship uh, that may have been stressed due to some altercation or confrontation or some bad behavior. Uh, and you'd like to kind of repair that and reach back out, this can be very useful for that. 
um, whether or not you were the wronged party. It can also be very helpful for more self-improvement style for people who are you know, genuinely struggling with an anger issue. The second lunar mansion can be very helpful combined with other forms of anger management therapy. Uh, you know, also very useful for individuals who are struggling to forgive or move past some kind of difficult situation from their past, whether that, especially one that's still holding you back due to trauma or fear. I really recommend the second lunar mansion for situations like that, um, since the second lunar mansion can be very helpful in helping you work towards genuine forgiveness for yourself or for another person, not necessarily to repair that relationship. Sometimes relationships are just too broken or, you know, the situation that ended them was definitely like way too toxic or abusive to warrant a reconnection but being able to like let go of that anger and forgive yourself for you know whatever for whatever kind of self-imposed guilt you may feel like letting it move on, go on for too long or not standing up for yourself when you should have you know let go move past it it's done it's too late no reason to hold on to that or to kind of forgive and let go of the fear or anger of another person not to you know forgive them and let them back into your life but to no longer be controlled by by that by that fear um, if it's keeping you from you know exploring new things so the second lunar mansion super super useful super helpful in these kinds of situations um, and here we have the second lunar mansion placed I'm sorry, we have the moon placed in the second lunar mansion, conjoined the ascendant, and she's applying a sextile to Jupiter, a planet that is very much about forgiveness and mercy, um, whether that is, you know, forgiving and being and forgiving and showing mercy to yourself or to another person or having another person show mercy to you and you know, like reestablish connections uh, that may have been frayed in the past. At the same time, we have Mars as the ruler of the first house. Mars is down here in Cancer. Um, not super happy that Mars is cadent in this kind of situation, but it's fine. Um, and Mars is not afflicted by Saturn, not combust the sun, neither is the moon. Things are pretty, things are pretty okay here. So moving into our charts for the Australian continent, uh, we're going to have a couple of familiar faces and a new one we we're going to talk about first here. And our first election is going to be for May the 2nd at around 5 o'clock in the morning. This chart here is set for uh, 4.50. And this is actually going to be an opportunity for a 23rd Lunar Mansion talisman. Um, the 23rd Lunar Mansion is, of course, one that is about devouring, about swallowing, about destroying and removing, um, which is perfectly fine. We like that as a perfectly natural and perfectly fine uh, natural process that it is important for people to recognize, respect and know when to use. The 23rd Lunar Mansion um, is useful for removing obstacles, for removing bad habits, for removing things that hold us back, for removing things that are coming after us, um, and for removing illnesses. So it has kind of like a curative aspect as well. Um, particularly useful for illnesses about the throat and the mouth. Particularly useful for illnesses that are about the throat and the mouth, since we have the kind of that swallowing aspect going on for it, but can be used generally for anything. Taking a look at our election for this, we've got the moon placed here in the 23rd lunar mansion upon the midheaven, and she's applying a trine to Venus in Taurus. It's not the sun, uh, as you know, as much as I enjoy those, but Venus as a benefic planet is very useful for these kinds of things. Here we might want to lean a little bit more heavily into the healing, curing illness aspect of it, um, but even when working with these more malefic type mansion spirits, using a benefic planet while a little bit out of character for it can be useful for having a more gentle experience with it. You're kind of the letting somebody down gently or not wanting to burn a bridge. The problem here, kind of our trade-off, is that the, uh, the severance will not be as strong and may not be as permanent. So that's something to keep in mind, that if it's something that you're dealing with, especially if it's something that is potentially dangerous, um, such as in the case of like wanting to get out of like an abusive relationship or anything like that, then it might not be a good idea to utilize a 23rd Lunar Mansion Talisman that features a connection with the benefic planet. For that, you might just want to go like full nuclear on it with a more malefic planet connection, and that's totally fine. It just really depends on your situation and what you're comfortable evoking or working with energy-wise. Or you may be somebody who does very well with martial energy generally um, to where it doesn't really blow up like that totally fine but benefic planet but i probably would not utilize um a malefic connection in if you're going to utilize the 23rd lunar mansion for healing unless unless you were going to use it for like something that needed to be operated on like something that needed to be corrected through surgery uh, like i think it would be really useful for like removing a tumor surgically 
by having a Mars connection, right? Definitely something you want to kind of burn the bridge on and just be done with. And Mars is all about that specific kind of healing modality, surgery, cutting, that kind of thing. So in that situation, I think connections with it could be fine for healing. But with Saturn, I probably wouldn't too much um, because some of the Saturn things might be kind of annoying uh, or dangerous to deal with. But just some words to just some, just some, just some, advice there to think about exactly how the planet that the moon is applying to can handle a situation and how that handling may change depending on that planet's personality. So our next electional opportunity for the Australian continent is going to be one that we have a couple of different options for. Like we have two different opportunities for it during the day. And our first opportunity is going to be um, May the 7th at around 7.45 in the morning as kind of our opening. And this is going to be an opportunity for a Venus planetary talisman, Venus and Taurus planetary talisman. Um, and so we're going to call this kind of our, oh, well, okay, so now that I've just, like, it just hit me, the, and we'll talk about what just hit me in a second. So I kind of started this election off at 7.45 in the morning. Um, you may be able to do it a little bit earlier, but as you can see, we've got Venus kind of close to, we have Venus and Taurus on the ascendant here, right? Um, but what I'm kind of having to work against or deal with is Jupiter here um, in Aquarius, because what we want is we want Venus to be more, the most angular planet. Um, and so that requires Jupiter to be more than five degrees off the midheaven. So that's kind of where we, why we start this at 745. You could probably start a little bit earlier, but like, I, I don't want that there. Um, so that's fine. But the hour of Venus ends on uh, ends at around 8.03 in the morning. So you only have about like 18 minutes of clock time to do the thing. And that's that's okay. That can be plenty of time if you've prepared for, even though it is kind of, you know, one, a lot, it's, it's a shorter window than we would typically prefer. Um, but like what just hit me was that this actually happens during a Friday. Um, so you could go beyond um, the 8.03 mark. Uh, if you wanted, you will just lose the Merc the Venus hour. It'll move into a Mercury hour, which might be something that you don't want. Maybe you do want to have like a double Venus day and hour situation. Totally fine. Like that, that's really the ideal. But losing it, losing the Venus hour to the Mercury hour isn't a, isn't a, isn't not a deal breaker like it was in um, North America's Saturn talisman because it's also Venus's day. So you still have kind of that backup to fall on. Whereas in the Saturn talisman, I think it was, it was not Saturn's day. It was like, a, it was like sun's day. Um, so once you lost the Saturn's hour, you were done basically. But for this, you can fall back on the Venus day and it can be fine. So that's kind of our first one, our first opportunity here. We have the moon applying the sextile to Venus. Venus is far enough away from the sun to longer be combust. She's not square Mars. She's not square or opposed or conjoined Saturn or Mars. Um, so all in all, pretty good. But we actually have another opportunity for this later on in the afternoon when Venus comes to the midheaven. Um, and this is around 1245 is what this is set for. Um, and what we have here, of course, is it's still Venus's day. So that's why we're able to still do this. Um, and we have Venus can join the midheaven here. We still have this moon Venus sextile. I overshot that. We still have this moon Venus sextile occurring here. Um, but what we're having to deal with here, what we're having to balance out here is we've got um, the sun as the ruler of the first house who square Saturn. So actually you can't use this opportunity. So um, I'm glad that I worked through that. And we're just gonna cancel this. <laughs> this is this is canceled actually. So you're gonna use the first one. You're gonna use the one in the morning and that one's gonna be fine because Venus is the ruler of the first house and she's not afflicted by anybody, okay? <laughs> so our final electional opportunity for Australia and for our video today is gonna to be on May the 9th at around 425 in the morning. And this is gonna be that opportunity for the second Lunar Mansion Talisman. So everybody gets a second Lunar Mansion Talisman. Forgiveness for everybody. Removal of anger and acceptance for everybody. Perfect, I love it. Um, and it's very, it's set up, you know, basically the same as the others. The second Lunar Mansion, uh, of course, within a waning moon context is about removal of anger and about the cultivation and allowance of forgiveness, whether that is forgiving yourself for something that you have done or some regret that you have, some anger that you feel towards something that you've done in the past, whether that is forgiveness for wrongs that another person has done to you to help either reestablish that relationship or just to forgive and move past it and kind of let have the like force that to let go of whatever power that that may have over you, however that's holding you back. Or, you know, on the other hand, you know, shoe on the other foot, helping to reconnect in a relationship where you were the one who did something wrong, where you hurt somebody else, um, and you want to kind of reconnect and reestablish that. 
this is going to be your uh, this is going to be your chance to create a talisman to help with any of those situations. Taking a look at our election, we have the moon placed in the second lunar mansion conjoined the ascendant, and she is applying that sextile to Jupiter, uh, who is of course a really great planet, all about forgiveness, mercy, uh, all things that we want, all things that we're kind of leaning into for this type of talisman where we want to emphasize these types of sentiments or emotions to facilitate this kind this this specific kind of emotional healing the ruler of the first house is mars here in cancer which I, i'm not a huge fan of mars being cated in this context but um, it will work fine mars is not afflicted by saturn mars isn't afflicted by the sun the moon's not afflicted by saturn or the sun just all in all a really good talisman to use just to let go um, of anger and to facilitate that kind of healing on an emotional level, which is super important, of course, our emotional health and how it can hold us back. But all right, those are all the electional opportunities that I have to share with you guys this time. Um, a good amount of overlap uh, for the different locations, which is usually a little bit rare. Usually there's something about the moon position that either invalidates it, makes it a different lunar mansion, or connects with a different planet that is not quite the kind of energy that we are looking for for the talisman that we are trying to work with. So this was a pretty, a pretty fun couple of weeks where I kind of got to repeat myself a lot. Uh, and hopefully, what I hope happens is that by repeating or like being able to talk about the same talisman, the same litter mansion several times, um, that it helps under it helps everyone, helps viewers understand what these talismans can do, um, and it kind of helps me think a bit more about different ways to apply them as well. So hopefully that is what happens, and I think kind of the bigger headline here is that all the three locations actually get planetary talismanic opportunities as well. Usually people have to miss out, and I guess that is kind of the case since Western Europe and Australia get the Venus elections, um, whereas Western, I'm sorry, North America gets the Saturn elections. So we still have a little bit of missing out, but it's still nice that everybody gets to do gets to participate in a planetary talisman as well. I just wish we could get some freaking fixed star talismans. Um, because I think those are kind of my favorite personally, but they're always, but anything is fun to talk about. Having any kind of elections to share is always worth it. So everybody take care and I will see everybody again on the Taurus new moon.